There is a saying attributed to St. Augustine that one who sings prays twice. As with many sayings, and with many saints, the quotation and attribution may not be accurate. Even so, as a singer, these words resonate with me because singing has often brought the words of the Bible to life for me. Psalm 42 has always been one of my favorite psalms, and I've sung many choral settings over the years. I still find myself humming parts of these songs now and then. When I was in college, the director of our chamber choir commissioned a new choral setting of this psalm from William Hawley, an American composer. We sang its premiere, and we took it on our East Coast tour the year I graduated. For me, it's not just the music. It's the imagery of reliance upon God that speaks to me. Even though I had sung this psalm many times, I didn't really think about the seriousness of its words until I went to Jerusalem for a year after college. Growing up near Niagara Falls, I always envisioned Bambi walking through the green forests of western New York. When I arrived in Jerusalem, I realized that the physical setting of Psalm 42 was much starker. There are green places in Israel, but much of the land is rocky and dry for most of the year. The deer in the psalm is not wandering peacefully in a green forest, searching for a mountain stream. It is desperate for water in the desert, water it needs to survive. The psalmist describes this desperate longing for God, even as other voices taunt, Where is your God? Rather than succumb to this despair, the psalmist says repeatedly, Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Early in my year there, some friends invited me to come with them to the Dead Sea for a weekend. Now usually, I would spend days or weeks researching such a plan. But in this case, I was packed and ready in 30 minutes and heading with them to the bus station for an adventure. We got to the Dead Sea in time to unpack on the beach before dinner, and then in pitch dark we floated on the water under a starlit sky. It was amazing. The next day my friends took me hiking along En Gedi, a stream that flows from the mountains down to an oasis next to the Dead Sea. I called it a stream, but in most places it was barely a trickle at the time. I could see that there was water somewhere because trees and plants grew along its path, but in many spots it was dry and rocky. As we kept going, I started to get dehydrated, and I wasn't sure I could go on. But my friends encouraged me to keep going, just a little farther. And then we turned the corner to find a mountain pool of clear, ice-cold, refreshing water. Ever since then, I think of that experience when I sing or read Psalm 42. There are times in my life when I have felt I just couldn't go on. But there have been people beside me who had been in that place before, holding me up and encouraging me to keep going just a little farther. And I have found that I could keep going and that around the corner were streams of living water, more than I could ever need. I suspect many of us are feeling these concerns right now, with all the changes brought by the pandemic. Not sure how we can keep going. My prayer for each of us is that we may find the support we need to keep going, and that we may find those sources of living water that God has waiting for us. A few years ago, I made a short video combining photos from my trips to Israel with a recording of my college choir singing Sikut Cherzbus. The images show the contrast between the stark desert landscape and the rivers of water. I will include a link to the video when the reflection is posted. St. Peter Canisius, pray for us.